All right, gang, we're still on the theme and we're going to stay on the theme about related party transactions. We're always concerned about related party transactions and we certainly want to look and keep an eye out for them. They may be legit, but there may be a lack of arm's length transaction and of course disclosures are required. So we want to make sure you have a fundamental understanding of how to go about this area on the CPA exam. Nathan has completed procedures for identifying related party transactions and has identified the following related party transactions. He noted that there was a purchase of a building for $200,000 from Chris Fine, the chief accounting officer. Per a discussion with Chris Fine, Don Dime, all right, Polly Soap, the controller, and Terry Reed from the board of directors, they ask about the transaction was entered into because Creative CPAs was looking for an additional building to purchase. Chris Fine was looking to sell a building. Although the fair value of the building was $225,000, Chris offered to sell it for two hundred dollars since he would not need to have marketed the property. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to review the terms of the transaction. And the very first place we go is to the board meeting. These are minutes. And this shows that this was per this particular item, they note that they have a quorum, they had a meeting, it was called, and Creative Clothing was looking for a building and it's noted. Chris Fine has a building located and they gave the address, they talked about the price, and note it was ultimately passed. So all of those items are there and hence the related party transaction was properly approved. Our next item we go and obtain evidence of the transaction. So here we're going to look to see all the relevant information. So we look at the escrow statement, the date that the actual transaction occurred, the amount that it occurred for. So we're looking at all of these items and we have the confirmation. So we see that the confirmation was made, the date, the amount. So the escrow agreement and the wire transfer confirm and corroborate all of the information that we were looking at. We then verify the transaction is appropriately accounted for. And you can see that the first set of columns are your asset and the right-hand side columns are your accumulated depreciation. We had the beginning balance. We showed the addition. It then becomes part of the ending balance and cross foots. We also show that we properly calculated depreciation on that item as we went through the process. Nathan then verified that the related party transaction was appropriately disclosed. And you'll note, we had note five. In December of year two, Creative Company purchased a building from Chris Fine, the chief accounting officer, for 200,000. There is no outstanding amount owed to him at this time. So we proved to whom it was sold, or from whom it was bought. We also proved the dollar amount, and we verified that there's no additional amounts outstanding because we paid the amount per the wire transfer. Nathan is at lunch with Sarah and they are discussing the topic of related party transactions, unrelated to Creative CPA Clothing. They discuss the following independent situations that have been seen during recent audits and the impact of each situation on the risk of material misstatement. In the first one, we notice that management had an insufficient understanding of the applicable related party disclosure requirements. Oh, that's gonna create a problem, wouldn't you agree? that is going to increase the impact on the risk of material misstatement because they clearly don't know what to do. The level of competency isn't there. In our second one, there was an internal ethics code which clearly outlined the circumstances in which entities could enter into related party transactions and it was appropriately communicated. Well, that is going to decrease the risk of material misstatement. In our third one, the business proposal initiated by certain related parties are always approved. Hmm, sound like somebody's got a, a little bit of leverage over the company because management and those charged with governance don't want to upset the related party. That's bad. That's too much influence and therefore that's going to increase the risk of material misstatement. Our next one, an additional approval was required for related party transactions that involve actual or perceived conflicts of interest. Each related party transaction was required to be approved by a subcommittee of those charged with governance comprising individuals independent of management. Boy, that's an extra strength and that decreases the risk of material misstatement. In our next one, the internal audit function monitors related party transactions and the related disclosures on a quarterly basis. Monitoring is obviously a good thing that will decrease 
the risk of material misstatement. And then we have management viewed identifying and disclosing related relationships as a low priority. Oh, bad. They're not taking it seriously. That increases the risk of material misstatement. So hopefully that helps you in understanding the related party transactions and how we need to address them. You're now ready to try an exercise.